Hi guys, welcome to this week's video tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be learning a few things, uh, particularly focusing on shadows and getting some extra reality into your rendering in Photoshop. So the first thing we want to do is look at making sure we've got the right orientation of our model uh, relative to solar north, so the shadows are coming from the right direction. So you'll notice on your site, uh, when you're working in East Vic Park, that you will depending on which side of the street you're on, you will have your building or your structure facing a certain direction and then depending on where north is will define where your shadows are going to come from of course. Uh, so solar north is what we use in SketchUp to make sure we have the north point coming from the correct angle on our model and that way the shadows are going to be coming from the correct di direction um, when we're taking our render images. So to use Solar North, we need to go to the extension warehouse for SketchUp. If you type in Solar North SketchUp extension into Google, it will bring up this page, um, probably one of the first links. Click on that and then we want to download that. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't seem to want to work in Google Chrome. So I'm using Internet Explorer for this one. Firefox should work as well. If you click download, it's going to ask you to put in your Gmail account just to verify your SketchUp license. Uh, and then do all that and then click download again and then make sure you save the SketchUp extension somewhere where you can find it in a second and we'll show you how to install it. Now we're in SketchUp we want to install our downloaded uh, extension so what we want to do is go to window preferences and then go to extensions here and now we want to install the extension. So just find where you've downloaded it to. Here's Solar North. Open. Yes, I want to install this extension. Okay, now available for use. Perfect. And just click all of these now. Okay, you should see Solar North. This little box here is uh, landed on your page. You, it's just a tool so you can chuck it into your uh, normal palette just up there. So you've got three options with your Solar North tool. The first is toggling. And you'll see that this orange line has come up now when I click on this. And that's showing us that north is directly up the page at the moment. And if we turn our shadows on, we can see that it's coming from that direction. And that's depending on where our time of day is and the time of year as well, obviously. Um, so if it's late in the afternoon, they're going to be coming from the west. In the morning, the sun's going to be coming from over here in the east. Um, so that's fine. Uh, the second button here gives us the option on choosing where our north is going to come from and obviously depending on where north is um, we'll change the direction of the shadow given on a certain time of day. So what you need to do is by using Google Satellite figure out exactly where north is for your site. Obviously depending on where you are in the street north will be a slightly different um, orientation and on which side of the street as well. So you want to use this tool to click where north is going to be. And if you want to be completely accurate, you can actually enter the angle as well. If I enter 27, change it to that correctly. Make this noon. Beautiful. Okay, one thing we'll notice is that we've got a bit of a problem. So north at the moment is um, set into America or the Northern Hemisphere. And so north at noon in summer should be where the sun is coming from and therefore the shadow should be behind. But what we can see in this model is that we're at noon, we're in summer and we've got our north point coming from this way and yet the sun seems to from the south making the shadow go towards the north. So now we need to change the location of our model to be in Perth so that the shadow will be going the right direction with our north point. And this is how we do that. If we come over to File, Geo Location, and then Add Location, it's going to bring up a dialog box so that we can add our location. Now I've already typed it in here, Albany Highway, East Victoria Park, and this is going to be our region. I'm going to click Yes, because this is my site and I know where it is. You can drag along and find your actual site, but for just this demonstration, we're going to go Grab and that is our location. It's now been added and you'll notice that the shadow direction has now changed. So if we make this winter in Australia, got nice long shadows at noon and our north point is directly up the page, we can now see we've got long shadows headed towards the south. So 
we can tell our location is now set to where we want it to be and if we were to change our solar north now we're definitely dealing with Albany Highway because everything that's up the page is resulting in shadows down the page for north so perfect so here's my north point got my location set got my shadow set and now we're really starting to work so this means that when we come to drawing up our final renders or putting our renders together the shadows are perfect to where we need them to be so we've got our shadows on and they're going the direction they need to be if i'm changing the time it means it's changing the location of the shadows accurately so we can change the time of year we can play with all these different things and it's going to be accurate to perth beautiful okay the next thing we want to do is to have a look at our shadows in photoshop this is where we were in photoshop with our and last week we had a, a shadow file that we rendered out separately from SketchUp and that was providing most of the shadows that were there. What we want to try and get to is something a little more like this with some painted in shadows to give a little bit more depth and reality to what's happening there. And so really what we want to do for this is to get a new layer and we're going to start to slowly brush in some shadow and as we build that up, we'll build some depth and reality to what we're doing. So let's experiment with that. So we've got a new layer. We've got the brush tool. We've got black on. And we probably want to put an opacity around about 10%. What we'll do now is we'll zoom in. And we really want to work the corners. The corners is probably where we'll find most of the shadow accumulate. If you make your brush small, and we'll start to paint in nice and light around the points that have shadows and then we'll make our brush a little bit bigger paint them again a little bit bigger and paint them again what we start to do is we put up some depth of shadow there so we can see that shadow has really started to build up there we can do the same thing again along here we'll make our brush smaller first along that corner point push in some shadow back in some more shadow we can see this shadow starting to develop along there. Then grab another corner point. I want this arc here to become really nice and dark. Beautiful. Make my brush bigger. Do the same thing again. Same thing again. And we're really starting to build up some shadow along that edge. Beautiful. Nice. And we'll repeat that across the whole drawing really start to build up some shadow along all of the edges and the second thing we want to do is to make another layer again and we want to have a shadow coming from one direction uh, because usually sunlight will be coming from one way and therefore ambient lighting will be resultant uh, in the same sort of direction so the shadow will be coming from one point extending to another particularly when the opening is largely from one direction which it is here so what i want to do is pick this as the darkest point here make my brush relatively small start by clicking there i'm going to add shadow as we sort of multiply out from there and start to drag that across and what that's going to do is make a point of shadow and don't worry about this being too dark for now we're going to lighten it up in a second now that's our point of darkness in the image so that when we lower the opacity a little bit on this We've got darkness coming from one area and light coming from the other area. So now we're starting to balance this out. We've got light coming from the outside and from the street and a, a little bit of darkness in the image. And with the same with those shadows over here that we painted on before. See, when we turn it off, it's quite uh, bare. And when we put the shadow in, we're really starting to see the depth of the edges along here. Uh, one extra trick that I like to use is to up these edges of this really dark shadow here that we've put on the arc so we've built up really nice shadow here but we found that the material is actually so the shadow is actually starting to blend over this um, brown slash orange material that we have here so what we can do is find out where we've got this orange layer on a separate layer which is this one here if we right click on the actual layer square itself the thumbnail if I right click on that it brings up the select pixels option I click on that it's now selected everything that's in that area which is really handy I'll come back to my shadows over here and I'll press the delete key and now what that's done is deleted all the shadow that led into that 
material. Now I've got a nice sharp line of my shadow texture there. And what that does is it gives me a really nice bit of depth in there to that arc. Now it's quite dark at the moment, so I can lower the opacity down on that so it's not so resonant. Uh, but you find once you build up the shadow and all the different areas, it really starts to add to the depth of the picture. As we can see here. And it's a, it's a nice way to really take your image to the next level. Um, so remember the rules of thumb, stick to the edge conditions and this sort of ambient shadows and then clean it up and make them sharp by right clicking on the thumbnail, select pixels and then deleting out the shadow that shouldn't be there. Uh, that's a really handy way to build up the shadows and make them nice and thick. Um, so you'll end up potentially with something like this and nice shadows. Sometimes it does get a bit spotty and a little bit too much um, and that's up to you to sort of mask them out and clean it up and do what you want to do with the image. So that is shadows uh, for SketchUp and Photoshop expanded to make them a little bit more real and to get a little bit more oomph to your money shot images. So just as a reminder of what we covered today, we looked at Solar North and installing that extension for SketchUp so you can make sure your north point is correct. Uh, then we looked at the geolocation uh, for your SketchUp model to make sure that your model is in Perth and Albany Highway so that your sun is going to be from the right orientation. And then from there, take our shadows into Photoshop and paint in some more ambient shadows. And that will really, really amp up your money shots. Excellent work, guys. See you in class. Have fun. And as always, enjoy. Thanks, guys.